Welcome to Swerve Church Live. Welcome to Swerve Church. We're so glad you could join us online today. If you would, just please take a moment to fill out our online connection card. This is where we can stay connected with you if you have any needs or if you need prayer, or if you just wanna let us know how you're doing, uh, this is our way to connect with you. You can do that online. We're gonna drop a link here uh, at swervechurch.com cc. We'd love to hear from you, drop a note. We say every week how thankful we are for those of you who generously give to our ministry. It allows us to just serve the community here in Bushwick to uh, be the hands and feet of Jesus. So we're so thankful for your generosity. And we say all the time, we will lead the way with the rational generosity. You have an opportunity to join in that mission and join in our ministry by giving. You can head over to swervechurch.com slash give to give online or the number on the screen. Uh, you can text that number to give also. Thank you so much for your generosity. Today we're beginning a new series, uh, semi-new. We, we're jumping right back into Galatians uh, and we're gonna be in Galatians 5 and this series is called Freedom. What does it mean to be free in Christ and what does Jesus give us freedom for? How does he set us free? And how do we live in that freedom most importantly? Over the next few weeks, we're gonna be looking at this. We're gonna uh, observe uh, how Jesus lived and what his death and resurrection has bought us and the freedom he has given us. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for allowing us to continue to meet online, Lord. 
uh, during these uncertain times, would you give us peace? And God, as we look to the gospel, would we understand the freedom and, and the cost um, of what you've given us, Lord, that we would be able to live and walk in that freedom. Help us as we look at Galatians, that you would speak to us through the Holy Spirit and that we would live uh, more like Jesus because of what we learned today. In Jesus' name, amen. Galatians chapter 5, freedom in Christ. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free. And don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you're counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. I say it again. If you're trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. For if you are trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. But we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. Hey everybody, God bless you. Excited to be kicking off this new series called Freedom. Welcome to Swerve Church. My name is Danny. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet just yet, I'm so glad that we can connect this way and that we can dig into God's Word. Uh, we're going to be doing this series. It's called Freedom. We're going to be in Galatians chapter 5. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and take them out so that you can follow along. Uh, by the way, also guys, you can uh, follow along with the message notes on the Bible app or on our Facebook page. Uh, on the notes section, if you search that up, uh, you'll be able to find our message notes there, the Bible verses, and every single one of the fill-in-the-blanks are there so that you can track along, so that you can follow along. Uh, now, way back when, we started a series called Fake News, and essentially it was a walk through the, book, through the book of Galatians. We hit the pause button, and since then, a lot of stuff has happened, and we've done many series in between that. But we're going to jump right back into it, and we're going to continue our study through the book of Galatians. So that's where we are today. In this series called Freedom will be in Galatians chapter 5. I just wanted to catch you guys up and uh, jog your memories uh, because it's been quite some time since we dug through the book of Galatians. Uh, Galatians is a letter that was written by the Apostle Paul to the church in the region of Galatia and essentially Paul was addressing this important issue. He had taught of course that the gospel uh, was that we are saved by faith through uh, the work of Jesus Christ not by our own doing but by Jesus alone. Now, but some a, a religious sect had made its way into the region and was starting to come in and essentially build on top of that message and say, yeah, you know, all that Jesus stuff is great, but you're also missing out this one particular thing. There's also a couple of rules and regulations that you have to follow in addition to this whole Jesus stuff. And this religious sect came in preaching this and they were trying to fool and uh, and, and were teaching erroneously to the believers in Galatia. And so Paul wrote this letter to address exactly what was going on. Now, the particular issue that they were dealing with was the act of circumcision. And this would affect, particularly, specifically, fellas, this would have affected you uh, if, if you were alive during this time. The religious sect was coming in and was saying, no, uh, you know, that Jesus stuff is cool, but the fellas also have to get circumcised as well and in order to uh, truly be saved and ex truly experience salvation. And so Paul is here correcting exactly what, go what is going on, you know, and he's telling them the truth. Uh, so, uh, in, in, in uh, chapter 5, where we're going to be today, specifically, Paul has reached the section of the letter where he's talking about the extreme freedom that we experience in Jesus Christ. And he compares a religion and this yoke to keeping the letter of the law, he compares it to enslavement, is what he talks about, a very dramatic language uh, that he uses just to go to the extent, to show the extent of how... Uh, a truly enslaving and, and how uh, much of a burden it is uh, to follow the letter of the law uh, and, and not just simply put our faith in Jesus Christ. So if you guys are ready, we're going to dig right into it. We're going to go verse by verse. In uh, Galatians chapter 5, we're going to read the first six verses or so. And we have exactly six points that we're going to go through. I'm going to steamroll through it, guys. So 
make sure I buckle down and, uh, and listen up. Take notes if you want. We're going to steamroll through these passages and, uh, and we're going to try to pull out as much meat as possible. So what does it mean to have freedom in Christ? Six things uh, that we're going to look at. Freedom in Christ means, number one, that we can stand firm against the yoke of religion. That we can stand firm against the yoke of religion. And Paul says it this way in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. For freedom, Christ set us what? Church, say that out loud. Christ set us free. Stand firm then and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. Now Paul here uses a very strong word picture to describe the additional rules and the regulations, you know, apart from, you know, faith alone in, in the work of Jesus Christ alone to grant us a salvation, forgiveness of sin and newness of life. And he describes it as a yoke of slavery. And it's a powerful image that he uses and he's saying that religion is like being held hostage and it's akin to slavery. If you live your life this way, it's like you're enslaved and it's like you are in bondage to this thing. Now, that word yoke uh, perhaps is not a word that you're very familiar with. Uh, he's used it several times in the book of Galatians and other his writings in the New Testament. But essentially, yoke was a piece of farming equipment. And the farmers would attach this equipment. Uh, you can see a picture of it right here. To basically to oxen, to some other uh, beast of the field to help them labor and to help them work. And it was a heavy piece of farming equipment. It would burden the backs of the oxen uh, or, uh, or, or, or whatever beast they were using to tend to the field. And it would keep them together. It was heavy and it was burdened. And, and it would help them do the work of uh, plowing the fields. And this is exactly what Paul is talking about. And he describes religion this way. He describes it as a yoke. And anytime we add anything to the gospel message, that's what we're doing to ourselves. Anytime we add anything to the pure and simple gospel message of Jesus Christ, we are enslaving ourselves. We are putting on a yoke. Now, isn't it interesting that Paul says that we need to stand firm. We need to stand firm and not to submit again to the yoke of slavery, this yoke of religion. You know, and it's so interesting that he says that because uh, we all tend in some way or form uh, to be bent towards uh, an attitude of trying to keep the rules and regulations in order to earn, uh, if not salvation, at the very least, some sort of favor from God. And it seems like there's a natural bent inside each and every single one of us to be bent towards a religion in some way, form, or fashion. And so he's saying that we need to stand Firm, stand firm, stand firm against the yoke of slavery, stand firm against religion. Freedom in Christ means that we can receive Christ's benefits. Uh, we can receive Christ's benefits. And Galatians 5.2 says, Take note, I, Paul, am telling you that if you get yourself circumcised, that's the issue that you know they're dealing with, particularly here in the church of Galatia, Christ will not benefit you at all. And Paul essentially is saying here that if you can do things on your own, if you were able to keep a particular commandment or a law or an Old Testament a procedure, then you don't need Jesus at all if you can take care of it yourselves. And you know, what this tells me is that inside of each and every single one of us, there's a little bit of a savior complex that we need to overcome. You know, we live in a day and age where we're very autonomous. We can do things on our own and we're, we're not very comfortable with asking people for help. Right? We, we live in a culture that is very much, I'll do things on my own. I'll just Google it and I'll figure it out on my own. I don't need your help. And if I'm in really in need, I'm not going to reach out because that's the type of culture that we have developed. We've developed a savior complex. And it seems to me that that savior complex also bleeds into our Christianity. That savior complex tends to bleed, in, bleed into our faith as well. If you can grant your own salvation, if you were able to earn your way uh, into heaven, if you were able to work your way into earning the favor of God, then why did Jesus have to come? Why did Jesus have to live a perfect and sinless life? Why did he have to die that gruesome death on the cross? 
Why did he have to crush the, the serpent's head and, and, raise, uh, ra and, and, and raise to life from the grave three days later? Why did Jesus have to do all that? Why is he sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding on your behalf and mine? If you were able to grant your own salvation by keeping the letter of the law and doing these good deeds and works and earning God's favor, then why did Jesus have to even come? Christ doesn't benefit you if you're taking care of it on your own. Then you don't need Jesus' benefits if you can do things on your own. Where in your life have you elevated yourself into the seat of Savior? Where in your life have you elevated yourself into the seat of Savior? Are you able to admit your need for help? Do you see and do you acknowledge your sin? So often it's so easy for us to point at other people and recognize and acknowledge other people's sins and we're unable to identify the sin in our own lives. Can you see that there's no amount of work that can earn your salvation. We simply need to repent and receive Christ's benefits. Freedom in Christ means that Jesus fulfilled the law on our behalf. And Paul says in Galatians 5.3, Again I testify to every man who gets himself circumcised that he is obligated to do the entire law. Here's what Paul is saying in this verse. He's saying essentially that if you're going to keep one law, if you're going to keep one particular rule, then you got to keep every single one of them. And by the way, you got to keep every single one uh, without fault. Otherwise, you will fail them all. If you, if you do one, you got to do them all. If you screw up on one, you've done screwed up on all of them. Now listen, the most devout Pharisee or Jew, they didn't just keep the Ten Commandments uh, that perhaps you and I uh, know really well. But the most devout Jew and Pharisee had well over 600 laws and commandments and ordinances that they had to follow. And Paul says, listen, you can't just cherry pick the one circumcision verse in the Old Testament and keep that. You're going to have to keep each and every single one of those rules if that's the way that you're going to live your life. And you better not mess up on not even one. But you see, guys, it's ridiculous. Because what the law does, it demonstrates to us our inability to uphold the law. If the law does anything, it shows us how bad we are at keeping the law, right? Just think about the Ten Commandments. Nobody would say the Ten Commandments is like, you know, any, anything crazy, anything out there. It's not like a circumcision uh, of rule here, right? It's morality one-on-one. -on -one. You know, the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not lie. Have you ever told a lie? You've broken the law. Uh, thou uh, shall not steal. Have you ever stolen anything, big or small? Right? If you've done that, then you've broken the commandments. You've broken them all. It says to honor your father and your mother. Have you ever dishonored your parents? We've all been there. Even if it was either in front of their face or behind their back, we've all dishonored our parents in our disobedience, in our attitudes towards them. Then we've broken the law. If we cannot even complete morality one-on-one, -on -one, what makes you think that we can possibly complete any of the other 600 laws and commands of the Old Testament? You see, guys, Jesus fulfilled the law on our behalf because we were unable to. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, and it made Him the worthy sacrifice for us on the cross of Calvary. And freedom in Christ means that we cannot keep the law. We, we, we just simply cannot. We simply always fall short. We are unable to keep the demands of the law. But Jesus did so for already. And that is extremely freeing. Because we know that we will never be able to keep the letter of the law. But Jesus did on our behalf. Freedom in Christ means that we receive God's free gift of grace. In Galatians 5.4 says, You who are trying to be justified by the law are alienated from Christ you have fallen from grace grace that word grace means unmerited favor in other words grace means we get what we don't deserve it's kind of like a gift a gift you see a gift isn't earned otherwise it's not a gift it's a wage right it, it's simply a, a gift is simply freely given with no strings attached if strings were attached then it wouldn't be a gift you know, I think about like with my kids, you know, when my, when uh, my wife and I, when we give them gifts, do you think they get gifts because they're little angels? Let me let you in on a little secret. They're not, right? They get gifts from us 
out of the abundance of our love for them, we freely give them gifts from a place of love. And God's free gift of grace is given to us from an infinite source of love that is at the very core of God's character. And He gives us this grace, unmerited favor, undeserved favor. And grace is freely given, not because we deserve it, not because we can earn it. It is freely given. And many times we feel like we need to earn salvation because it's such an amazing gift. We feel like we need to earn it. We need to do something. We need to pay God back because of this grace that we've received and because we don't deserve it. But that's the point. The point is that you don't have to because you can't and we never will be able to, but God gives it to us anyway. He gives us grace. He gives us Jesus. You know, by the way, this is why many of us are not very good gift getters. We're not good at receiving gifts because we feel like we need to pay uh, someone back. That destroys the purpose of the gift. If you feel like you need to repay, then it's no longer a gift anymore. And grace is a gift that is simply needed to be received with open hands and an open heart. You receive the gift of God, grace. Otherwise, it's not grace and it's not a gift. Freedom in Christ means that we have the hope of righteousness. In Galatians 5.5, Paul writes, For we eagerly await through the Spirit, by faith, the hope of righteousness. And if you like to write in your Bibles and, and you like to highlight and underline in your Bibles, I would underline the last part of that verse, the hope of righteousness. The underlying condition of keeping the letter of the law is our attempt to be righteous. That's why so many of us desire, that's why so many people live Uh, their lives very religiously because they want to appear and seem righteous. You know, we want to see progress in our lives. That's the type of uh, of beings that we are. We want to see progress in our lives. And uh, uh, putting on a show or appearing righteous, perhaps it might fool others. Uh, And honestly, you might even look in the mirror and you might even fool yourself. And, 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 And by putting on this appearance and thinking that God is at work in our lives. Uh, And I hate to be the one to bust your bubble, what I'm going to do today. You ain't a saint, and you never are going to be. It is simply impossible. You will never be perfect. You will never be sinless. You see, guys, sin surpasses simply what we do. Sin is not just the the acts of, of, of the wrong things that we do. Sin surpasses all that, and it even creeps into what we think. Our thoughts can be sinful. It works into our intentions and into our motives. And guys, faith is a journey. Faith is is a journey that we walk with Christ. It's a process. I walk with Christ. And hopefully as we walk in in this progression, as we walk in this journey with Christ, we see, you know, hints of Jesus really working in our lives and and we sin less and, and we begin to look like Christ more day by day as we grow in maturity, as we grow in Christ's likeness. But we never become fully perfect because it is simply impossible. But what does Paul say? Paul says that we eagerly await through the Spirit the hope of righteousness. In my opinion, I think that means two things. The hope of righteousness to me means that we are made righteous by Jesus' work, which means that right now we are righteous by faith through what Jesus has done, not by any work of our own. The fact that we have the hope of righteousness means that I am righteous right now, even though I sin, even though my motivations and my intentions are sinful. Because of Jesus' work on the cross, God views me as righteous. I am righteous right now, not because of the way I live my life, because I make mistakes and I fall incredibly short before the grace of God. But because Jesus has made me righteous, I am righteous right now. And the other side of that coin is that one day I have the hope to be righteous and that because of Jesus' work on the cross, I'll be in the presence of God and and we'll be away from this fleshly, uh, sinful desire that we have and we'll be made perfect in the presence of God. That is the hope of righteousness that we have. Now let me ask you guys a question. Are you holding yourself to an impossible standard that you will never, ever, ever be able to live up to? Are you holding yourself to that standard? 
that's a religious way of thinking because then you tend to beat yourself up when you realize man i can't always walk a certain way i can't always live a certain way i can't always you know dress a certain way there seems like you know all these rules and regulations that i'm putting on myself i simply cannot keep up with it because you will never you will never be able to it is impossible this side of heaven but we have already been made righteous in christ and we have the hope of righteousness here's the last point number six Freedom in Christ means that we receive God's love through faith. And Paul says in verse 6, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision accomplishes anything. I think it's interesting that he put it here because uh, I guess you can say that, you know, it kind of goes both ways. Uh, Oh, well, I'm righteous because I keep the letter of the law. Uh, You can flip that around and say, Oh, I'm righteous because I don't and because I'm free in Christ. It goes both ways. And and Paul is saying here that it's neither circumcision nor uncircumcision that accomplishes anything. So then what actually matters, Paul? What matters is faith working through love. How do we receive God's free gift of grace? How do we receive it? The way that we do it, according to the Bible, is through faith. Now, the simplest definition, the simplest way to view faith is trust. Trust, that's what faith is. It's putting trust. And by nature, we're not very trusting people, right? And it kind of bleeds into our Savior complex, thinking that we can handle things on our own. But by nature, we're not very trusting people. For example, you know, I hate lending stuff out. Because whenever I lend something out, guess what? The the person I loan it to either breaks it or I'll never see it again. And it's gone forever, right? Like, I, 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 it's hard for me to trust uh, because I've been burnt in the past. And maybe that's your story as well. But faith is the one thing that separates us from submitting to the yoke of slavery. Now listen, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you've been burnt in the past. Maybe you have these issues of trust because of what's, what's happened in your past. You've been let down right? and, and you have this lack of trust. But what we need to do is have trust and faith in Jesus. Think about this. The antidote to doing, right? If we're thinking, oh man, the way we earn righteousness, the way we earn our way to heaven is by working, is by doing, is by doing stuff. The antidote to doing is doing nothing but having an overwhelming faith that the work is already done. The antidote to doing is doing nothing but having faith that the work is has already been done. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you've been let down. Maybe you've been scammed. Maybe you've been lied in the past. You've been disappointed, but not Jesus. Jesus has not done that. In fact, you can have faith because God's love was already proven. God's love was already proven for you and for me by Jesus' work on the cross, by Jesus living the perfect and sinless life. God entered His creation through the perfect Uh, work of Jesus Christ and he showed us the way he lived the life we could not live and he died our place on the cross so that in his uh, death we can experience the forgiveness of sin and so that in his life we can have newness of life Jesus showed us the extent of his love by dying on the cross and by conquering the grave so that we can be made righteous in him and how do we accept That forgiveness of sin. How do we experience that newness of life? How do we accept this grace of God? It is by faith. If you're here today, you're watching or listening to this, and you've yet to make a decision to put your trust and your faith in Jesus. Maybe you tried religion. Maybe you tried living a devout religious life. You tried to keep the laws. You tried to look a certain way. You tried to behave and talk a certain way. And then you just realize that you fall short anyway. That's because it's a yoke. It's, a, it's bondage. It's enslavement. We simply cannot live up to that standard. But Jesus did. And in order for us to experience that forgiveness of sin, new life, and salvation is by putting our faith in Jesus. And if you haven't done that, I want to encourage you to do that. The simplest way to define faith is trust. Are you saving yourself? trust Jesus and his work to give us salvation just have faith and trust in him freedom in Christ 
Guys, are you living free in Christ? Or you are enslaved in the bondage to sin, to slavery, to religion? Let's live free because Jesus Christ paid the price for us so that we can have freedom. Let's pray. God, I know that within us, Lord, there's a natural bent, uh, Lord, in all of us to um, think that we can religiously earn our way into heaven and into relationship with you. So, God, I pray you help us to stand firm against the yoke of slavery. Lord, that we may not kid ourselves and realize that we fall incredibly short and that we will never be righteous and perfect this side of heaven. But because of Jesus, we are already righteous and we have the hope of righteousness. Thank you, Father, for the free gift of grace given to us in Christ Jesus. I pray, God, that you may increase our faith so that we might surrender and trust you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When we speak of freedom in Christ, we're not speaking of this religious bondage of, of doing works for Christ so he can, we can earn His approval. No, we have a much greater freedom and, uh, in the gospel and what Jesus has bought for us. Have you experienced this true freedom? Can you say that your life is fully devoted to Jesus and the freedom that He guarantees us through God's gift of grace? That is all on the table for us today to enjoy that freedom and to live in that freedom based on what Christ has done for us. Every week we say that no matter where you are with your walk with Jesus, there's a next step to take. The best decision, obviously, we say every week is that you can make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, that you can lay down any hindrance to sin because of what Jesus did for us. And so we would encourage you that if you haven't accepted Christ and made him the Lord of your life, that you would do that today. That is the best decision and the next step you can make. But beyond that, maybe you have accepted Jesus and you've made Him the Lord of your life, but you've yet to get baptized and to follow that in obedience. Maybe it's developing regular rhythms in, in the Bible and praying, joining with others and serving the community. Whatever that next step is, we would love for you to be a part of that and let us know that you want to make that next step. So you can visit swervechurch.com slash next step and take your next step today. We'd love to join you in those next steps. So how do you like this mask? Isn't it so cool? Danny just gave me mine. And we have some, uh, just a few, but we have some for you too. If you're watching this live video, please email your uh, mailing address to us at info at swervechurch.com. We'd love to send you one of these uh, so you can rep Swerve and, and just have a mask because we still have to mask up here in New York. So if you would like one of these awesome masks, just send it in your address, your mailing address to info at swervechurch.com and we'll send you one in the mail. Next week, we're continuing our series, uh, Freedom in Galatians. But the good news is, and, and we did this a couple of weeks ago, we're meeting it in person. That's right, you heard right, in person. We're gonna meet at Hope Park. So join us at the park for live worship, Bible study. We're gonna open just like we do online, except we're gonna be together. We're gonna have some snacks, we're gonna have great fellowship, and we're so excited to finally meet up again. So be sure to pay attention to any, uh, all of our social media, any texts, just to stay up to date with our next meetup. We're excited to see you. So let's end how we always do every Sunday by saying, whoever finds God, finds life. Have a good week.